Hello everybody. Uh, I got asked quite a good question that I think I'm doing in the Q&A video this Sunday. But what I thought I'd do is, because this question was so good, I'm going to do an entirely separate video on it. And it's sort of one I've covered before, but it's I've had a few different people ask me very similar questions. So it's not really responding to any one particular question, but I think it should cover a lot of things people ask. And I want to do this as a separate video so I can give you it in a bit more detail than you know, talking for on it, you know, for a couple of minutes during a larger video. So, it's kind of how do you EDC a gas mask, like everyday carry a gas mask, which I sort of covered before, and like what are good ways of doing it, and do certain gas masks fit in certain bags and things like that. So I thought I'd give you some ideas on if you want to carry a respirator for your own protection, different ways you could do it, some of them which wouldn't be suspicious at all, um, you know, others where you just openly kind of do it. Um, so I want to go into that and I want to just give you some ideas obviously what you can do then is once you've got the ideas in this video you can probably come up with something that works for you but so I've got a couple of things so this is what I've talked about before this is an ideal respirator setup you buy a proper gas mask bag um, generally you want to go on the larger size as long as you're comfortable carrying a larger one because you can fit everything in here what I have in this one is my Avon CT12, which is probably my favourite gas mask. I do have an FM12 now, which I know is technically the better one because it has a drinking tube, but I wouldn't ever want it for an EDC gas mask. I'd rather just have the lighter mask. So, in the bag, whoop, don't want to chuck it all out, but in the bag I have my CT12 gas mask. I have two filters in there. Now, these aren't actually brand new filters, sealed filters. If I was going to take this out somewhere, I would put a sealed filter in just to be safe. Um, but I've got a P3 filter that's pretty much brand new in this bag and an S10 filter that still seems to work. Um, but what I also have in here at the bottom is my emergency kind of chemical poncho. Um, and that's obviously good to have in there because it means it's not a full NBC suit, but you can throw it over yourself in an emergency and it will keep you from being splashed by chemicals. So that's good. So this is your ideal setup because you could have like maybe up to two sealed filters in a big gas mask bag, the gas mask itself, and like some emergency maybe rubber gloves, a survival poncho, some other stuff probably as well you could fit in there um, in a big bag because you can also get like, I'm not sure exactly what it's called, you have the antropine I think it's called for nerve gas, but I don't think you'd really be able to get hold of that as a civilian and it's a bit dodgy, you know, using it if you... Um, you know, incorrectly using it can kill you. And there's also um, things like uh, like the creams for like blister agents. They're ones that are probably a good idea if you could get hold of them and you knew it was like in date and all going to work, or just some kind of maybe stuff so you could wash chemicals off, like some sort of hand sanitizer, or maybe just clean water in there. Um, that would also kind of work as well, I guess, if somebody threw acid on you. Um, but yeah. So, not to go into loads of detail, obviously, all the stuff like that, but this is your ideal sort of setup bag, I would say, in my opinion, because you can simply keep a lot of stuff in it. But what happens if you don't want to actually have a designated gas mask bag? Uh, so we'll look into those options now. Okay, let's use the Israeli 4A1 gas mask as an example, because these are cheap to get. You can kind of fold them up. Um, they're sort of a one-size-fits-all gas mask. So I've gone on about this one before, why it's a really good mask to buy if you want an actual respirator fairly cheaply, you know it's going to work. Um, here's just a GOST filter. Uh, this takes both GOST and NATO filters, which makes it even better because, you know, it's even easier to find filters for this mask than normal masks because pretty much anything's going to work on it. But enough about the mask. This is just an example. It really doesn't matter on the kind of mask. Um, most satchels and bags end up being much bigger than masks anyway. Um, so where could you keep it? So one of the options you've got is getting any sort of generic surplus rucksack. Um, this is a Swiss, I think, knapsack. Um, Max got this for me for my birthday, so that was very kind of him, although we couldn't figure out how the straps work on this because I think it's meant to attach to some kind of harness that doesn't come with the actual bags, which is, you know, useful. But you could still use this as a knapsack if you tied the things in the right way. But obviously, if I was to get a filter, and the mask, so then we're just using this one as an example as it's to hand. 
you could easily fit your mask and your filter in there with loads of room to spare. So, um, you know, these are obviously good options to have. Um, you can get all sorts of different surplus knapsacks um, and rucksacks. So, you know, they're always a good option. Um, they're much bigger than gas mask satchels, so you could keep the mask and loads of other stuff in there if you want to. Um, masks, some people in the comments seem to think that masks are really fragile and stuff. A good gas mask isn't because it has to go through, you know, being bumped around, being carried by soldiers, go through adverse weather conditions. And most importantly, a gas mask has to protect you from chemical warfare agents, which can be very, very nasty. So getting them a bit wet, as long as you don't let it rust, isn't going to damage the mask. Right, so this is the option I think is going to be best for a lot of people is to get a rucksack with a few different compartments in and then find a compartment in that rucksack that's good for the gas mask and you know filters and then you can have it to hand in one of the sections you can have it zipped up and you know where the mask is you know when you need it which section to undo so I think that's a good option really because obviously a bag like this is completely nondescript unless somebody searched it they wouldn't know you have a gas mask in there and you could definitely even fit a full raincoat in here for NBC protection and other stuff as well. You know, because the idea of EDC in a gas mask is that you have it for your protection, but you don't want it to be, you know, so over the top and annoying that, um, you know, it's a pain in the ass basically to be carrying around with you. So that's that obviously set up. And as I was saying, you can experiment with things you'd like to do, uh, you know, different bags and things. I think even with a lot of women's handbags and things like that, if they wanted to carry a respirator for their protection in there, you could easily, you know, fit a mask and filters in there. I don't have any handbags to test it with, but, you know, I think that would work fine, to be honest. Um, you know, there's so many different ways that I think people, when they carry satchels around, you know, different bags, all those sorts of things, you could easily have a mask and filter in there without it taking up much room. And if you wanted to get, um, sorry, uh, pardon my voice breaking, if you wanted to get um, sort of even smaller masks, there are definitely masks that are smaller than the Israeli 4A1 and things like that. Another thing you can do when you store masks to make them take less space is to actually pop the filter. It's going to be a bit difficult with this one all the straps, but you can pop the uh, filter into the mask itself. And that takes up even less space. Some masks and carry satchels are designed for you just to tuck the filter in like that. So, you know, they take up less room than they would otherwise. So, that's an option. Another option is um, in your car, because people said, what do you do if you have it in your car? Well, in your car it's even easier, in my opinion, because of just how much space you have in the car. Um, obviously, if you have a really small car, the glove box might be really small and you might not be able to fit a mask in there. But in general, most cars are going to have some sort of compartment in the inside where you could fit a mask with a filter on. Or, not the filter necessarily on the mask, but sealed, ready to go. Uh, every car you're going to be able to fit a gas mask in your boot easily. Um, like I said, it's only ready if you're in some sort of horrible country where if the police found a gas mask in your car you might be arrested or something. Um, you know, that would be a problem because for the most part they're not legal to own or you know carry around with you. I can understand why you wouldn't want to actually have the mask visible just because I think that might cause panic with people have no idea what they're you know much to do with them. Uh, it's the same sort of reason why um, I, when I wore body armour I generally tend to wear the Kevlar vest under a coat just because it doesn't attract attention to it Whereas if you're wearing a Kevlar vest in public, that might make people a bit suspicious, even though it's totally legal to do. So it's easier just to wear any sort of coat over the top so nobody notices you've got a Kevlar vest on. You look, just look a bit fatter um, than, you know, not having one. But, yeah, my setup in my car is in the boot I have a couple of 3M respirators. And that's just because I use them when I volunteer. So they stay in my car boot until I need them. It's easy in ferrying them back in and um, you know, back in and out of my car every week when I volunteer. Um, but you know, if I wanted one immediately, I could have cleared a space in my driver's door or whatever where there's a gap. Put a mask in there that's quite compact with a filter, and then you know, if something happened, you could just bung it on. Um, but as said, my ideal setup is this one, just because this bag works well, um, and where other people have asked, unless you buy a really small gas mask satchel, um, most gas mask satchel bags or respirator satchel bags are very good. Um, like obviously the really cheap end ones like GP5 ones, 
although the materials are not too bad, they don't have much space in them. But if you actually look at the proper sort of full-on military satchels um, that were designed to you know, be issued with quite a bit of kit, they are perfect. Um, because you could always use this as another bag if you don't want to carry a gas mask in it. Some of these are really hard wearing. I've said about this one before, but I got this one off of Amazon. Uh, there is a label on it somewhere, which I've read out in other videos. But it's one that's not like an actual military one, it's just kind of a company that makes lots of rucksacks. They do a gas mask style bag, which fits masks perfectly. But of course I'm not going to be able to find that label now that I want to find it, because it's probably on the inside of the bag somewhere stupid, where you can't see the label. But, you know, regardless, if you look on Amazon or eBay for gas mask satchels, gas mask haversacks, you will find a lot of options available. Um, as I've said before, I will show it again, but I'll show you my favourite gas mask satchel bag, and it's one where if I found some more cheaply I'd buy them, but annoyingly I can't tend to find them without buying the masks with them, I don't want more of these masks. So this is the favourite of all my gas mask satchels, I've talked about it lots of times before. I'm not a fan of the M10M gas mask, but I do love the M10M satchel. Um, somebody told me it was coated in vinyl because I wondered what it was, so it's like, you know, fake leather, feels like leather. Um, but basically, if I open it up so you can see it, the inside is kind of this kind of uh, fabric. The camera's going to get that. But yeah, this kind of just, um, you know, like more cottony kind of fab fabric. And then it's got this, yeah, vinyl, if it is vinyl, or, you know, like leather or whatever coating it's got. Um, that obviously makes it waterproof and inside you've got absolutely loads of room in this because it's designed for cheek filter masks. So I've got the M10M in there um, with its cheek filters in and that hose that I've got for it for the uh, SCBA setup that I don't have and I only have one hose, not the two hoses. Um, it can easily fit, you know, a chunky gas mask and loads of accessories and you even have a bottom section in here. Um, which I've got the metal section of, but so this mask gives you absolutely loads, this mask bag, sorry, gives you loads of room. Um, it's a really nice hard wearing bag, it looks quite nice compared to a lot of satchels. You know, so it's one of those bags that I think, if I could find more of these on eBay or somewhere cheaply, and it's definitely this kind, because the M10 standard one generally comes with a much cheaper kind of nastier bag. It's still an alright bag, I've got my Forshida um, A4 in there as a setup bag, you know, ready to roll with spare filters and everything. But um, this one, I think, is slightly bigger, the workmanship's just better on it and it's a much nicer bag. So, um, yeah, like I said, you have a lot of room with a satchel like this one. So you could, you know, really do a good setup of putting a full raincoat in, you know, gloves some sort of uh, cream in case you had some sort of blister agent on your skin, the mask and spare filters. You know, this is one of those bags that afford you a lot of room. Yeah, it's a bit chunkier, but whatever. You can also get those kind of messenger bags, can't you, or laptop bags. They'd be good for, you know, carrying a mask and um, filters in. So hopefully this video hasn't gone on for far too long, but yeah, that's some ideas for you to play around with for EDCing a gas mask if you wanted to. Um, you know, what I would say is maybe easier for some people is to have more than one mask. Maybe just buy several of the same kind of mask if you like that kind of mask. And then keep the mar different masks with, um, well the same, you know, same version of the mask but different masks. With uh, spare sealed filters with each of the masks and then keep them in different places so they're to hand. So if you had one at one of your workplaces, you can maybe keep it in your locker, you know, keep one in your car somewhere and then keep one in a bag set up for, you know, use wherever you wanted to carry it. So uh, that's some ideas, but you know, as I said, gas masks are fairly hard wearing things and them and a the filter takes up surprisingly little space if you, you know, pack them upright and everything. So, um, you know, that's a good way of thinking about maybe doing a setup for EDC and gas masks. As I said, there's loads of different ways you could do it, so just play around and find something that works for you. And again, different masks come in different sizes and everything, so you can find a mask that's more compact or less compact, you know, things like that as well.